aggressive, voracious ambush killer. Always ready to crush its next victim to death. This is the stuff of nightmares. A deadly swamp monster, over 20 feet of sheer muscle power, waiting to suffocate and drag its prey to a watery grave. South America, the nation of Guyana on the northeast coast, boasts one of the largest unspoiled stretches of rainforest on the continent. Home to a giant, almost legendary reptile. The biggest and heaviest snake on earth. The green anaconda. Its enormous size and grisly attacks have given it a bad reputation. The floodplains, swamps, and rivers east of the Andes are its home, and water its element. Its secretive ways make this silent killer an enigma. Anacondas kill by literally squeezing the life out of their victims. This deadly embrace is one of the strongest known on Earth. It's like nine people standing on your chest. It may be a horrific way to die, but for this scaly predator, the technique is a proven success. Constriction is one of the oldest hunting methods among snakes. And the anaconda has been a master at it for at least 20 million years. An enormous monster lives among the people of Georgetown and they have no idea it's there. It seems unlikely such large creatures could remain unnoticed, but anacondas have found secret sanctuaries in the urban jungle. Water ditches are a convenient hangout. As night falls, a stealth assassin is on the loose. In fact, the city offers an easy life. There's plenty of food walking the streets. A dog is just the right size for a snack. You just have to know where to find it. Anacondas may have a trick to seek prey in the dark. They can sense their body heat. Almost every organism has its own heat signature. Although a snake wouldn't see a picture like that of a thermal camera, it could enable it to target victims accurately. Hunting at night allows the anaconda's deadly activities to go widely unnoticed by its human neighbors. And the menu isn't restricted to man's best friend. The good thing about living near people is their livestock. Being super flexible and extraordinarily strong means no obstacle is too big or too small. Testing the air with its forked tongue, the predator seeks out its prey. For the chicken, escape is futile. The struggle is brief as the anaconda's body winds itself around the hapless bird. Its embrace becomes tighter and tighter 
until the chicken dies from asphyxiation. City life offers a few comfortable but risky places to warm up. In the cool of the night, a car engine can be a heavenly place for an anaconda. They love the warmth. Around 81 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit is ideal. They tolerate a little less at night, but still, a warm niche is like a magnet for them. It's likely to be a nasty surprise for its human owner. As day breaks, the cityscape transforms. Lotus flowers enchant. They were first brought to Guyana from India and have spread like wildfire in canals and ponds. The land here lies below sea level, so the ground drains poorly and there's plenty of standing water. Perfect anaconda habitat. The thick forest of lotus flowers and leaves is also home to small creatures that make ideal baby food for young anacondas. This one is still less than three feet long and just a few months old, but already a killer. Many young anacondas don't survive long. There are wild cats, stray dogs, or simply urban traffic to contend with. A more hostile habitat for anacondas is found along the coastline where the river meets the sea. Mangroves thrive in sweltering conditions, rooted in choking mud, and tolerate salt levels that would kill ordinary plants. The giant snakes have found a way to survive here, right in the thick of tangled mangrove roots. Everyone here has to be exceptionally tolerant to an ever-changing environment. Twice a day, the tide floods the mangroves, then leaves them high and dry. It triggers a changing of the guards. A different set of animals emerge. Crabs come out of hiding and patrol the roots. A young speckled caiman squelches through the mud, looking for food, unaware. He's being watched. The killer waits patiently for the perfect moment to strike. An anaconda's hunting success depends on split-second timing and speed. out of the caiman's body. Where mangroves have given way to the unpredictable human thirst for terra firma, a new landscape emerges, sugarcane plantations. A different sort of forest that draws a sizable crowd of new creatures. Where there's food, there are anacondas. This quick-legged iguana is being stalked. 
Distracted by food, it lets its vigilance slide. A fatal error. Death comes quickly, but eating the prize is a slow affair. Even a small meal like this takes around 30 minutes to swallow. Life in the fields is a double-edged sword for the anaconda. During harvest time, the fields are set on fire to burn dry leaves and flush out unwanted critters. Miles of lush green go up in smoke. Animals desperately try to get away from the hellish inferno, but many succumb to the flames. The anaconda's cumbersome bodies are sluggish and awkward on land. Too slow to escape the fire. Were it not for numerous drainage ditches. They can sit out the blaze safe in their water world. Anacondas are, in fact, extremely versatile. Even in their traditional home ranges on the savanna, the extremes of wet and dry seasons force them to be adaptable. During the wet season, the savanna is flooded and lush, supporting a rich diversity of life. Giant Amazon water lilies dot the water. They're native to the shallow waters of the Amazon basin and boast dramatic flowers nearly a foot across. Although the leaves are delicate, they can easily support this young 40-pound anaconda. A network of strong, air-filled ribs supports each leaf. They can carry weights of 99 pounds. Tough, pointy spikes keep fish at bay. It's a great perch. The skittish youngster can disappear into the water at a moment's notice. But this watery Eden is only temporary. The dry season puts a brutal end to it, and life without water is unthinkable for an anaconda. This anaconda is seeking shelter in a damp mud hole to wait out the return of the rains. Others leave the parched heat in search of water. They migrate to wetter climes for the duration of the dry season. But as the last pools dry up, progress becomes increasingly difficult. Caked in mud, this anaconda is effectively blind. Raising her body and flicking her forked tongue, the giant snake gathers sense. When the tongue is pulled back, it skims the sensitive Jacobson's organ on the roof of her mouth, which analyzes the information and helps her find her way. Her journey is fraught with dangers. Bushfires are frequent, and the monster snake's massive body is not built for speed on dry land. Her situation is precarious. 
Only the lucky can escape this merciless blaze. The dry season ignites bushfires across the landscape. Dangerous hurdles for this anaconda. She fights her way through the blaze and is rewarded for her efforts. She finally finds relief in a permanent waterhole. It looks like a good place to survive the dry season. The sun continues to ruthlessly beat down on the savanna, and even the last reserves of water disappear. An anaconda caught out on the parched plains is in a dire situation. The largest anacondas are slow and sluggish on land. It means traveling far is out of the question. More than 20 feet long and weighing in at more than 220 pounds, this anaconda is a true monster. But she's fallen victim to the aggressive assault of the dry season. Even a majestic predator like this has weaknesses. The relentless heat of the sun takes its toll. Did this anaconda's colossal size help seal her fate? A huge feast like this soon attracts visitors. Nature's waste disposal units. squabble over the best pieces and pick away the flesh, they expose what may have been the giant snake's downfall. Her skeleton. An anaconda's endless thin rows of ribs provide a delicate scaffold for such a heavy body. It allows them to be extremely stretchy and flexible. The anaconda's lungs and vital organs stretch almost a quarter of her length. So breathing in this heavy body becomes more difficult on land. It may be that very large anacondas need to live in permanent water to support their hefty bodies. In fact, the largest anacondas don't live on the savanna with its tough seasonal climate. They live in the rivers dissecting the rainforest, where they're not controlled by the seasons, and can bask in the sun on accessible riverbanks. Arranging their bulk in coils helps support their own weight. The forest and its rivers offer rich pickings for an anaconda. As opportunists, 
They'll eat anything they can overpower. The sheer diversity of life is staggering. Including competitors. And enemies. Out here on the river, the hunter can quickly become the hunted. In these parts, letting your concentration slip could be the last mistake you'll ever make. Black caiman roam the waters. Up to 20 feet long and weighing around 660 pounds, they are the biggest living members of the alligator family and the largest predator in the Amazon. Guyana boasts one of the biggest populations of large black caiman, more than 11 feet in length. There is a strict hierarchy at work. The bigger the caiman, the higher the rank. Their biting power is immense, enough to crush bones and sever limbs. And if need be, their powerful tails can propel them far enough out of the water to snatch prey from its perch. Strong, armored skin protects their backs from attack. Black caiman are built like reinforced submarines, formidable tough and well-armed. Compared to this river monster, the smooth, soft body of an anaconda doesn't stand a chance. The anaconda's jaws are lined with more than a hundred rows of needle-like, backward-facing teeth designed to strike and keep hold of prey long enough to put its deadly coils to use. The black caiman's teeth, on the other hand, are strong, crushing, ripping tools, perfect for hunting and killing mammals like capybaras. Capybaras are as much at home on land as in the water, but as soon as they enter the river, they attract unwanted attention. With enormous power and lightning speed, the black caiman snatches its victim. And if one hunter struggles to shred its prey, others soon join in to rip and tug at the corpse. Unnecessary collaboration, as caimans can neither bite off pieces nor chew them. Rolling their muscle-packed bodies soon tears even the toughest hide into manageable chunks. Caiman's hunting and feeding methods, along with teamwork and group hierarchy, set them apart from their anaconda competitors. It may seem like a free-for-all, but there are strict rules. The largest and most dominant caimans get the best pieces. All that's left of the hapless capybara are just a few morsels for some lucky scavengers.
The anaconda is a completely different hunter. Her weapons are not her teeth, but her muscular body. But she too has a taste for capybaras, the largest rodents on Earth. They're strict grass eaters. This is where their long, sharp teeth come in, allowing them to sever even the toughest stems. It makes them as formidable and dangerous as a rat, the size of a Rottweiler. Capybaras spend much of their time in water, so they're excellent swimmers and can dive for long periods. But anacondas always approach with stealth. Once caught, there's little the capybara can do to get away. Even its teeth are useless weapons now. And unlike the caiman, an anaconda needs no help to devour its prey. Sharing is unheard of. But it takes time. Eating such a large meal in one sitting is a challenge. It can take up to eight hours. Still, it's worth the effort. A single large meal can sustain her for months. Guyana means land of many waters and reflects the dense network of large and small rivers. From the highest points, they plunge down toward the Atlantic in a dizzying array of waterfalls and rapids. Black Caymans don't venture beyond the falls, but there are no barriers for the anaconda. The pools are rich in fish and attract other predators too, like giant otters. These nearly six-foot-long fish specialists aren't put off by the rapids. Even clumsy youngsters are able to make a successful catch. Yet for now, they remain under the adults' watchful eyes. And since the black caiman is absent, this is where the smaller and less powerful speckled caiman thrives. Catfish, paku, and piranha populate the rapids. The hunters just have to wait until a careless fish comes within striking range. Just above the falls, the waters change and the rapids disappear. Being more adaptable than its black caiman competitor, the anaconda has also conquered these upriver locations. A silent killer makes her way along the top of the falls, where the water-scoured rocks provide good cover. Up here, where the black caiman is no threat, the anaconda is the undisputed champion. A showdown between two ancient killers, but this time the anaconda has the upper hand. Two predators using entirely different strategies, the anaconda's thin-skinned and agile flexibility versus the caiman's tough body armor and brute strength. In the forests alongside the river lives one of the anaconda's relatives, the boa constrictor. It's much more aggressive and will strike at anything deemed a threat. It attacks with such speed that the action can only be captured in slow motion.
body is like a single six and a half foot long muscle and allows it to effortlessly glide between branches. It can suspend more than half of its body to bridge seemingly insurmountable gaps. The emerald tree boa seeks out its prey through scent, sight, and by sensing body heat. The thermal receptors just around its jaws allow it to strike. In this impenetrable jungle, rivers are often the only breaks in the dense canopy. This is where enough sunlight reaches the ground to warm it up and anacondas need the sun's heat to regulate their body temperature. Caimans are no exception. They too have to partake in the basking ritual. Clinging closely to the warm rock, this caiman absorbs all the heat it can from the ground. A thermal imaging camera clearly shows how the rock and the sun heat up its body. The yellow zones are the warmest. For anacondas that live further in the forest, away from larger rivers, the permanent shade on the ground poses a serious problem. The sun's life-giving heat is absorbed by the forest canopy way above the ground. The forest has a layered canopy with very tall trees reaching up to 195 feet and 49 to 100. 48-foot-high trees below, so very little light filters through to the ground. This leaves the anaconda with only a few places to warm up, and they're all up in the tree. An iguana has the same idea. It keeps a wary eye out for danger. The spikes on its back are intimidating. But it's no killer, only a harmless vegetarian. A boa constrictor has the lizard in her sight. Too late, a daring leap into the water saves the iguana's life. It can fall up to 49 feet and land without a scratch. The iguana had obviously warmed up enough to react with lightning speed. The boa will have to find another meal, if it ever gets the chance. Preoccupied with its quest for food, the boa doesn't realize it's now the target. Anacondas have a taste for snakes. Nothing's off the menu, even a boa constrictor. 
the larger and more powerful Anaconda definitely has the upper hand in this duel. But swallowing a large snake up in the trees is not easy. With surprising agility and strength, the massive anaconda battles to keep control. But once caught in her hooked teeth, her meal is moving neither in nor out. Finally, the meal escapes but at least her jaws are free. In spite of their killer reputation, anacondas are not very aggressive. In fact, the biggest ones are the most peaceful. Some may reach about 26 feet long. It seems that as an anaconda gets bigger, its confidence also grows. It no longer needs to be aggressive to intimidate enemies. At this size, she has nothing to fear. The largest anacondas are all females. Males typically aren't more than nine and a half feet in length. stay like this for around four weeks. Courtship and mating are entirely unaggressive affairs. Patience and persistence are what count here. But things can change quickly afterwards. That's when the female anaconda may develop a taste for her own kind. She might devour one of her unlucky suitors, with good reason. She won't feed at all during the seven-month gestation period and lose up to 35% of her body weight. So a quick, low-risk snack following mating could be a last chance to bulk up before the long fasting period ahead. Along the riverbanks of Guyana's miles of virgin rainforest, female anacondas occasionally get together and bask in the sun. For animals that usually keep to themselves, these are odd assemblies. Social living is not something we usually associate with these monster snakes. But then, the anaconda is still a mysterious creature. Months have now passed since the anaconda's mating period. But unlike so many other animals, the anaconda hasn't lost a single unborn baby to would-be predators. Different from most reptiles who lay their eggs in a nest exposed to marauders and at the mercy of the elements, 
carries her young with her. Now it's seven months. It is time for her babies to emerge. some time without running the risk of becoming her next meal. It seems the anaconda does all it can to give her young the best start in life. Far from being the primitive swamp monster of our imagination, the anaconda appears to be a conscious, caring, and clever giant. A survivor from another age whose winning design has allowed her to triumph in the face of extreme adversity.